welcome to a new and improved diecast restos. I'll let on to why it is new and improved shortly, but this is Lesney's Matchbox 51A Albion Chieftain. These castings of the Scottish built truck were in production between 1958 and 1964. All were painted in yellow with a tan to brown colour applied to the cement sacks on the rear. Early versions like mine had Portland cement decals to each side and the blue circle logo on the cab doors. This is an Albion Chieftain on which the casting is based. Later versions of the Chieftain casting had the words blue circle added to the Portland cement lettering on the sides of the bed. They had grey metal wheels fitted to crimped axle ends initially. These were then changed out for grey plastic wheels before the axle ends were rounded off. After this point, wheels were either grey, silver or black plastic. Now though, I've managed to prise off this severely bent base. There isn't much to the casting internally, with most of the interest in the livery and decals. Here's a look at that base then. I'm not sure it was ever meant to look quite like this. But that's the issue with some early castings, where the only means of keeping the body and base attached were the rivets and posts. So here's the slender collection of parts, of which the body and base will be resprayed in my brand new spray booth, hence the new and improved. No longer will I need to venture out into the cold or into my garage and have to suffer poor lighting. My studio is very much better off for it, and I hope it shows in the results. Anyway, now to paint strip. Albion Motors, who built the Chieftain, were founded in 1899 and built its first motor car in 1900. In 1909, the company chose to focus on commercial vehicle production. Their last passenger car was built in 1915. They built their first bus in 1914, but then began producing high volumes of three-ton trucks for the war office during the First World War. I've decided to start showing off the casting in more detail after polishing, as often some of the finer detailing goes amiss. But here then is my new spraying booth. It's such a luxury being able to record in a decent light. This one was from Amazon, which my brother kindly bought for my birthday. I hope that this will ultimately lead to an improvement in the quality of my results. But we will wait and see. So after the Second World War, when Albion had been manufacturing Enfield No. 2 revolvers, the range underwent significant modernisation. The Chieftain truck first launched in 1948. It, alongside the other diesel trucks in Albion's range, received a curved front panel and recessed headlight facelift in 1950. The following year, Albion were taken over by Leyland Motors. The Chieftain then had a factory cab option offered from 1953. It was eventually discontinued in 1959. Leyland Motors and thus Albion became part of the British Leyland Motor Corporation in 1968. While production continued at the Albion factory in the Scotstoun area of Glasgow, the brand name was dropped by BL in 1972. Leyland vehicle production ceased at the Scottsdale plant in 1980, though components continued to be manufactured there. In 1993, the components business in Scottsdale was subject to a management buyout, forming a new company called Albion Automotive. This company was acquired by American Axle in 1998 and continues to manufacture truck components to date. As for Blue Circle and their Portland cement, they were founded the year after Albion in 1900. It was a merger of 24 different cement works that formed associated Portland cement manufacturers. These were mostly based in the southeast of England and made up 70% of the British cement market. In 1911, British Portland Cement Manufacturers Limited was formed by the addition of a further 35 companies, taking market share up to 80%. In the 1920s, the company's main brand name, Blue Circle, began to be used informally for the company itself. It wasn't until 1978 that the company changed name to Blue Circle Industries. The company was struggling at this time though, due to the energy crises of the era. With overseas assets sold off to competitors, Blue Circle was eventually sold off in 2001 to Lafarge, who then became the world's largest cement manufacturer. 
Lafarge continued to use the blue circle logo, which I'm applying here. This was a very intricate decal to affix to the door. The lettering to the side of the flatbed was far more straightforward. Being an early casting, the decals I've chosen don't include the blue circle wording. As always, I'll leave a link to the source of these decals in the description below. I have to say this is all coming together really well. The painting process has been flawless. I don't think I've ever had a coat of yellow apply as smoothly as this. Perhaps I've altered my technique given my new setup and better lighting. But the last thing to do before reassembly is to apply the trim. From factory, this was applied to the large rectangular grille and to the headlights. And now to fit my flattened base, which thankfully clicks in and is secured with a screw. So here is how my 51A Albion Chieftain casting looked earlier. The rear of the truck was sitting particularly low to the ground, and on further inspection it was because the base had been bent entirely out of shape. There wasn't a great deal of the decals left remaining on the body, nor the silver trim applied to the headlights. The paintwork was patchy across the yellow body, and also the tan of the cement sacks. But here is how it appears now. I am very pleased with the finish, most of all on this casting. The yellow is possibly the best yellow I've ever painted, and is a perfect match to how it looked originally. I think the same can be said of the tan for the cement sacks. The chassis has been straightened out so it is now sitting exactly as it should be. Though fiddly, the decals complement the casting and are again accurate as to how the models would have left the Lesney factory in the 50s and the axle ends, radiator grille and headlights all received a hit of molotov chrome to finish it off. So if you've enjoyed this new and improved diecast restos build, please do leave the video a like, be sure to subscribe and pop your thoughts in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you think of this restoration. And don't forget to check out and sign up to my Patreon too to help these builds get better and better. But all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.